Um, Prismal, what happens with him now? Um, can you say that you'll offer him a new contract now? Yeah, we will. We'll offer Brent a new contract. Um, Brent's a required player. And obviously, um, we'll have to look through you know, the terms and everything that contract, but yeah, Brent's a required player. And, we, uh, we're pretty sure we'll be here next year. That's a real vote of confidence in him, though, because obviously, second knee, Rico, um, a bit of a rough start to the club, but um, that's, that's great for him, obviously, that he's, uh, he's got the confidence that he'll be here next year. Yeah, it is. Look, it's a, it's a different knee, um, and I think he's had a history in the family of, mm. of knee reconstruction, so it's, a, it's an injury that you know, ne no one ever wants to see happen, but um, as you said, it's a vote of confidence. He's a required player, he's a very good player, and he's, you know, he's only 23 yeah. years old, so there's a lot of football left in Brent Prismal and you know he should be back by May next year so it's not the, the worst thing that can happen in his career. What's uh, Hibbard's contractual position now James given that he's uh, on permanent suspension? No Hibbard's uh, required Michael so he's a required player so he um, yeah very much a required player he's um, made a mistake and, and we'll treat him as people should be treated when they, they make mistakes but we'll also treat him with respect as well because he's uh, one of our, our family I suppose and, and we need to educate him in the ways of an AFL player and, and also you know how you behave in, in society. Been talking all year about the players you have out, but this week you got some big ins, haven't you? And some yeah. important players for a change. The guys coming back into this week. Yeah, Hurley, Hocking, Fletcher. It's fantastic to have those three players back. And um, you know, we're unsure whether we'd get uh, Heath back this year, but um, his, his foot's come up really well after two weeks rest. And uh, you know, Fletcher's come off the corky, and, and Michael um, Hurley again is um, is looking pretty good. So you know, they're three good players to have in there, but uh, they all have to play well, obviously, for us to be a chance on the weekend. I think you're asked about Paddy Ryder probably every third, second day over the last six months. Do you, do you feel vindicated in a sense that uh, the world was asking you to basically send him back to the VFL? He's really turned around the last couple of weeks as you thought he would. Yeah, look, he has, but I think yeah, people got to remember he's only a young player as well. And um, Paddy's nowhere near the, the full maturity of his body and the full maturity of his football career. So he's going to have periods where he doesn't play as well. Um, I think everyone likes to see uh, players come on the scene, play well, consistently play well, but it doesn't happen like that. So we need to work with Paddy as, as we have, and, and he needs to work uh, very hard in his game so that the consistency comes. Bell Chambers, James, has obviously been admitted. Was that related to the composition of the side this weekend, or what to do with his form? No, his form's been pretty good, and Tommy's in a really difficult situation where he's, you know, we've got some pretty strong ruck stocks, um, you know, and unfortunately for him, with Hurley uh, and Fletcher coming back in, um, and Carlo playing as well down back. We've got a very tall team, so adding one more probably makes us a bit, you know, a bit too tall. And but there's a massive future for Tom in his football career. And as frustrating as it would be for him at the moment, I mean, he he understands he's he's very close to being, you know, the n number one ruckman here. Chances. Uh, you mentioned Paddy Ryder. Goods was probably the difference last time in round two. Is there any chance that Paddy could play a defensive role on him? Yeah, very good chance. A very <laughs> good chance. I remember Sheeds when Paddy Ryder came on the scene, said he'd love to play Paddy Ryder on, on, on Buddy Franklin consistently and we sort of all scoffed a bit that that wouldn't be a possibility but um, you know he's game on the weekend defensively he knows how to defend and uh, Adam Goods is an out and out star and you know, I think it's one of the guys that coaches have nightmares about where he's going to play uh, and finding a matchup for him all over the ground is very hard so you know Paddy comes into contention there. State of Origin talk is back in that back in the mix James what are your thoughts on that and the best timing in terms of where it should be during the year? Uh, it just I find it. You know, State of Origin is a great concept. It was great. When we're all kids watching it, um, but it's it's a little bit hard to, to see how it fits in now. With you know, you look at our players, and, and we're struggling for players to play 17, 18 games with two buys. Um, you throw another game in for the best players in the competition, which is uh, at a higher intensity probably to a normal AFL game, and you just it, it just can't fit You're somewhere in the season. I don't think maybe once every four or five years, maybe, but. Other than that, I can't see it being a part of the, uh, the season. And the concept of a uh, mid-season trade period, do you have a view on that, and in particular how long it should be? Yeah, look, there's a number of pros and cons for that um, trade period. I think that the one thing you don't want to see out of that is guys losing a, losing a contract halfway through a year when they've you know their families and everyone's sort of based on on uh, on the payment they'll get for that year. So as long as players are looked after and they're not um, left in the lurch halfway through the year, I think it's it's quite a good thing and it obviously has interest for the supporters, has interest creates interest for the, um, the football environment and also enables clubs with a final deficiency through injury or through um, other means bad form they can top up their list, which you know I think it has some merit. Do you think that would have helped you this season? Obviously you had a couple of guys go down with knees. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it would have. Uh, we had so far this year, we've had four guys who, you know, with the two knees. I think they played three games. Those guys, those two guys, another two with a hamstring to Anthony Long and Darcy Danaher being, you know, um, injured for most of the year. We've had four guys on our list who really haven't been able to contribute through injury. So um, that makes it a little bit tough. So for us, it would have been pretty good. 
What do you think? A week? I know it's hypothetical, but a week would that be sort of a, a window? Or? I don't know. A week's a long time. <laughs> a couple of days might do it. Okay. A week is a very long time, and yeah, you can just you can see all the speculation, the hype. It would um, certainly create more interest around the game. James, training here at Eddie Hat must be a bit of a bonus. Yeah, look, uh, we'd love to train here as much as we can, and um, you know, just to be able to come out and have some shots of goal, it'll be a very light session for us. But um, you know, the players have played a lot here, but still. Um, just have a tr training session, do things a little bit slower and get a feel for the game is always good. Was it hard to get access? A lot of teams sort of seem to ask. Yeah, it's very hard to get access, <laughs> but uh, we we're fortunate being one of the tenants here that um, they enabled to access is very good of them to do that. And just one more, uh, Tom Hafey's 80th birthday today. Can you just give us a couple of words on his contribution to football? Oh, Tommy's a star. Yeah, Tommy's one of the, yeah, the AFL greats, isn't he? I think grew up as a kid watching him as a, as a coach and um, you know got to know Tom reasonably well, not, not, not overly well, reasonably well uh, just being around the traps and he sent me a lovely letter uh, when I retired which I've still got framed um, next, to my, uh, next to my work desk so a fantastic man for football and just a, a genuine gentleman. You'll be down the beach at 5am won't you when you're 80? <laughs> not quite, no, maybe 6.30. Oh, okay. <laughs>